All right, so this is a meeting of the Board of Registrars for Amherst. It's September 27th, 2021, 2.33 p.m. And um, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so um, in the following manner. Um, by accessing via Zoom, ID is 856-7517-9144. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can ad adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Okay, and I think that's all we need to say. So um, the posted agenda starts with we're, we're here to, to see if we can set some rules and some guidelines for the board. Um, so the first discussion or first topic is discussion of any regulations or rules of procedure that the board may want to establish. Well, I've sort of picked out some stuff. Um, in the um, in, in a couple of places, one was like the appointed committee handbook, and there are some guidelines on uh, page eight as far as like um, how the um, meeting should be set up. So I don't know if people had a chance, like really just to sort of like go through those kinds of things, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, Sue, can you share that so we can see it directly, or Jackie, can you share that? Unfortunately, I'm not the best techie, and they just upgraded this 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 uh, computer, and I'm not sure about some of this stuff. But, yeah, and um, this is just being set to me for the first time. So let me see if I can find a point of yeah. committee handbook. Yeah, because I I really haven't you know like discussed it. It was just like one of these things where I was just sort of like read stuff over, and I'm I'm not sure exactly um, where, what our starting point would be because in some respects I thought maybe these were the types of things that we were going to be the, discussing. Mm -hmm. See if I can find an appointed mm -hmm. committee handbook. Let's see here. It's going to be on the website. Mm -hmm. No, this will take me some time. So why don't you guys talk a little bit okay. about um, anything else while I'm looking this up? Because this isn't what comes from our office, it comes mm -hmm. from the town manager's office. So Okay, okay. Um, All right, we'll find it. Those would be like, um, and then also too, as far as like the duties of the chair, they were like an, um, in, the, in the same guide, um, 3.2. So I thought that these two things could be sort of like our, our um, writing type thing. And then like on the last page, and I thought that it was good on the handbook, um, was a, a nice page as far as like the sample of the committee minutes. So, you know, it'd be nice just to have like a standardized policy on how we're going about doing that. And I just found it. So I'm okay. just going to look. Yeah, I found it. Let's see here. Can you see it? Uh, yeah, I can. Yes. Yay. All right, so page eight, you said? Yeah, uh -huh, page eight, uh, four, three, when it talks about the uh, general guidelines, as far as like um, setting up with the, the uh, Robert's Rule of Parliamentary. Yep. Um, there we things go. of that nature. Yeah, that right there. And I think that these first three paragraphs are like applicable, as far as just so that we're aware of, you know, some of our duties and responsibilities are. Yeah, no, uh, thanks for reminding me of that. Uh, it seems pretty uh, 
normal <laughs> and procedural. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, no surprises. It's just that, you know, I just want to make sure that we're, again, all on the same page as far as like what we're looking at, what we're doing. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any um, comments, Jamie? Are you still reading? No, I think that, I mean, it all kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like a standard kind of thing. Okay, okay great. And then also, I just wanted to point out because there was, a, in, in some respects, at one of the meetings when pe people were talking about the town clerk. And there is um, participation, but there is a town of Amherst committee charge and the committee charge says voting members to include where possible the town clerk of Amherst is to be a member. The uh, four members of the committees must consist of two registered Democrats and two, you know, two Republicans. I just want to make sure that, you know, the people are on the same page as far as like Sue can be here. Oh, of course. And she's a voting member. That's in the guidelines. Yes, right, exactly. And that's what I, you know, again, I'm making sure we're all on the but, same page. We're looking at the same. Oh, okay. Page. But you haven't got to the, the chair yet. So we're, we're going to get no. there. Okay. No, no, I just was passing the time while we had a little, <laughs> while we were reading. <laughs> okay. All right. And then the next part is, um, um, let's see, to look at the chair duties on three, two from pages five and six. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That might take a little bit time to time to read just to make sure that yeah, again all on the same page. Nope. Appreciate it. I read it before, so. Okay. <sighs> it doesn't include that the town clerk should be the chair. And again, well, this is not personal towards Sue. Sue okay. and I are working on another yeah. committee together, and. Um, you know, there is a chair from that committee mm -hmm. and Sue is the, the liaison in that capacity. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and it seems to be a, a well-functioning uh, committee. Terrific. Terrific. And, you know, I want to say, um, when we had all of our meetings back in April, May, maybe June, um, and as you know, I'm, I'm newly elected or newly appointed clerk as of February. I know I've been in this office for almost 16 years, but I've never been um, directly, Jamie's laughing at something. I've never been the person to be um, the liaison with the board of registrar. So this was all new to me. So with all of the, you know, the meetings that we've had, and I've had a chance to look through all of the folders for the board of registrars i see that in the past all prior clerks the way they sign off on the minutes is clerk comma board of registrars so mm -hmm. the clerk yeah yeah so that seems to be you know member of the board of registrars but um not the chair i would never expect to be mm -hmm. the chair but definitely the clerk to the board of registrars because i'm i'm the one that's contacting you when things come up to let you know that okay you need to meet you need to do this you know so really cool absolutely liaison. yeah absolutely yeah. So, no, so that, that became blatantly clear through this whole process is uh, the clerk's role with the board um, and any titles and things like that. So I appreciate that, Sue, um, you know, providing some of that history. And again, this isn't personal. You, um, you know, have been doing this job uh, more and uh, longer than a lot of folks I know. So um, that's not the, the issue. It's that we as the board of registrars have a role and responsibility um you know uh to represent the voters and to keep things in my and this is my opinion and that's why i'm discussing it during the public uh discussion part of this of course and to be on record is that uh it helps to have uh these clear uh roles and responsibilities mm -hmm. Yeah. So that when there is a moment of uh, tension and dispute, you know, it, it won't be questioned uh, in terms of uh, whose authority or who's doing what. So um, I, I just feel having a, a chair from one of us three uh, would provide that clarity. 
I also wanted to uh, let you know, last Thursday, I was at a town clerk conference. So Michelle Tassinari, our elections, you know, head of elections was there. Um, you know, um, a lot of the city and town clerks were there. I got a chance to ask people, what do your board of registrars do? Just to get an idea. And it's very interesting. Um, but I did find out that Michelle does do some kind of training for board of registrars, which I'm going to I'm going to look into. But I can tell you the most of the answers from other city and town clerks were we meet three times a year and that's it. They do this, they do that, they do that, and that's it. And it's really um, I know when when you were interviewing for the position, you know, when you submitted your CAFs and sat with the town manager and myself and I think Jim Pistrang. Um, and Paul says, so Sue, can you tell tell the member, you know, tell tell whoever what the board does? And I pretty much said not much um, because it's really a kind of a standby role. So that's just something I really would love to have Michelle Tassinari's take on so you can understand. I know the law says one thing, but in reality, it's really another thing entirely. So I would love to, I'm going to look into that and see when she has some time or even if she's got a, a PowerPoint presentation it would be very helpful. And, and from my reading of the, the state uh, bylaws, uh, there is some leeway. So, you know, not all the towns in Massachusetts handle it the same way. But um, I hear you in general and through tradition, um, there is a limited role. My concern, um, as always, is about the voters. And we have a very active, um, you know, uh, <laughs> group uh, here in town, very active groups who are very uh, politically involved. Um, and, you know, again, it's it's not about whose side are you on or, or what have you. It's about providing transparency and clarity. And I feel if we are able to uh, facilitate that, then um, if possible, we can create some middle ground where the Board of Registrars has a role in doing so. Because actually, in, in some respects, there's a couple, couple of things I wanted to address on that in regards to, like, if you look at the officers, they do have additional officers. And I didn't know, like, if people wanted to, like, try and fill those positions as far as, like, the vice chair and secretary recording and that kind of thing, if you go uh, further down in this, um, in this officer's uh, bunch here. Because this again is the, mm -hmm. what the chair does, and then it talks about like a vice chair, uh, secretary clerk, rotating uh, secretary treasurer. Then there's, you know, like, there's more titles than there are people. But, right. mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but right. you know, you might think about, you know, for example, having a vice chair in case of someone's sick or whatever, or, you know, having a, 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 a secretary or that kind of stuff, because these are also, to me, things that we should be thinking about, too, not only just the, the chair. And then they have, like, the duties that they do, too. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Well, it seems to me, uh, well, a lot. some of that does not apply to us, because yeah. we have to have a quorum in order to meet, first of all. So mm -hmm. some of you may have to take on, if you wanted to have different titles, have a couple mm -hmm. of titles each. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And again, it's it's up to our discretion when just as you mentioned, Jackie, earlier about looking at the uh, protocols for um, meetings mm -hmm. and making some decisions as Sue opened the meeting with um, and how the meeting should be run. So it sounds like it's up to our discretion. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we can't fill all these titles or else we'd have duplicate uh, roles. And I don't, unless you can explain to me, Sue, why we would need a treasurer on the board of registrars, um, that's one that we can already discount and eliminate. Yeah. And then also there's, as they sound not commercial, wait, there's more, but there's also a couple more titles down there that we probably don't need either. <laughs> No, because this is the appointed committee handbook, yeah. so mm -hmm. this is, right. you know, mm -hmm. the board is know, kind of special. Yeah. yeah, but I didn't know, like, if anybody was interested in, like, the vice chair or either assigning somebody to be the secretary. That's the the concerns that I, that, that I was thinking about. But again, it's something that we can talk about so that we'll know where where we stand. 
Okay. Traditionally, the secretary has been the clerk slash clerk has been the town clerk, mm -hmm. as I had stated earlier, um, because that person's taking the minutes. Mm -hmm. Unless one of you wants to take the minutes. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I'm happy Let's to do it. <laughs> Usually nobody wants to do that. I'm happy to do that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Our minutes are generally fairly, you know, straightforward and easy. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, and then, um, you know, they did have like a template on the back of the hand, hand, um, handbook. Handbook. On the last page, where it, um, as far as like for MIDI, and I, I thought that that was a nice template. Oh, that's yeah, that's our standard yeah. format for um, doing minutes. Yeah. Right. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're already following that. Okay. Uh huh. But yeah, and I, I just want to make sure that we're all on the the, um, the uh, same page. And then also there is some additional stuff. But it's in the open meeting laws, but I think that what we looked at is sufficient. But in section uh, 22 on page 31, they have like a whole big. So we say expansion part on it. Okay, let's see. But that would be in the open. Um, yeah, I'm gonna find that one now. Mm -hmm. yeah. That one should take me not too long. Let's see here. Silly Tried to convert my Adobe Open Meeting Law Guide into Word by mistake, and now it's not letting me X out. Stop. Escape. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, right here. Okay, here we go. Okay, share screen, let's see. Can everyone see it now? Oh, wait a minute. Right. Now right. can you see it? Yes. yes. Okay, what page were you on? Uh, 31. 31, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, what if I can like, just go to 31? No, let's do it this way. The minutes, section 22? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there's two parts, but, but the, um, there's like a like a translation part, and that's that, that first part, and then there's the actual, um, the citing of the sections of the law in, um, in 31. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it, that's it, section 22, yeah, that's it right here, yeah, that's it. And that's just more expansive as far as like, uh, shall we say, the do's and the don'ts? Right. As far as like for the minutes, and board, hmm. recording them and all that kind of stuff. Well, to let you know, as of today, if all all three of you are 100% compliant with your open meeting law guide receipt, your online hmm. training, and your summary page. Yay! Yay! So, <laughs> <laughs> so this is this should be old hat. Yes. Um, so was there a particular area on here, Jackie, that you felt we should pay more attention to? So this is just an expansive um, um, uh, read through just to be aware of where to find these two. Just, in, you know, later on, because again, I went through everything just to see what was like, shall we say the highlighted events, but we can skip on and go move, move forward as far as I'm concerned. If that's what you know if you're you know as long as you're aware of where it is i'm good with it okay i can stop sharing this um i'm okay with it uh I can't, like i said i had read them and i just wanted to highlight areas so under the discussion of any rules or regulations or rules of procedure that the board may want to establish 
you um, just would like to point out that in the appointed committee handbook, page eight and page five, and then this um, section on minutes of open meeting law. Right. Uh -huh. Are there easy. any other things like, um, I mean, we're, we're the board of registrars. We're not a really big formal no. group. And I mean, you know, some committees will address the chair before they're allowed to speak. I mean, do we want to set things up like that once we have a chair? That was or, the other thing. Or just raise first... our hands. Mm -hmm. Because in, in that, in the, uh, going back to the other one, it does talk about like if there's small, um, small groups that you can like pretty much just not do the Roberts rules things, but if you, as long as you have like your own methodology in place. And I think as long as the, the chair has like a, you know, certain, certain uh, methodology, because um, um, one of the things that I did was I did find like, um, like some cheat, a quote unquote cheat sheets. And uh, I don't know if you can see this, but it's like a, a, a grid. <laughs> and to me, this is sort of like overly complicated for, for our purposes, but, but it's nice, but it's nice to, um, well, for me, and this is how my mind works is uh, pretty much to see what happens in certain types of uh, case scenarios. So um, that's what I like about that. But I mean, as far as like, um, you know, the making the motions, point of privilege and those, those kinds of things, I, you know, I don't, I don't think we need to go that deep into it, but I thought I would just throw that out as far as like um, getting some background on us, how we're actually gonna function. I think basic Robert rules of order are uh, important mm -hmm. in in terms of uh, folks taking their turns, but also when we have public comment mm -hmm. um, and there's discussion, it, it helps to keep things uh, clean and clear. Um, but yes, there is there there are whole books written on Robert rules of order. And um, I don't think we need to, you know, from my opinion, again, from my opinion, uh, most of these committees don't pay attention to the minutia unless it is needed in a very chaotic circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can maybe ask that Robert rules of order be instituted. Um, but you know, basic Robert rules of order with the chair calling on folks, um, including the public. I, I see nothing wrong with that. We have to take um, uh, a roll call vote, you know, for anything, um, because our names have to be attached to that vote. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's important and necessary for public record. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of that stuff is included in the minutes um, as far as um, what, what you're referring to as far as like the motions and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. But again, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page, that there are things out there that we have to look at and be cognizant of. Because the only time to me, Robert rules that we really would need it um, would be if we had a big meeting. <laughs> and so far, we really haven't had a, had a, had a big meeting. Well, I think last uh, <laughs> over the summer that uh, using Robert Rules of Order um, kept things uh, clear so that folks could have their opinions aired, particularly the public mm -hmm. and uh, the attending lawyers uh, uh, advising on behalf of the town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Right. Oh, do we want or have we, do we have right. anything else to say on this topic? I don't. <laughs> okay. We're going to go to the um, next one, signature stamp authorization at time of swearing into office. Okay. So I added at time of swearing into office because as you know, um, quite a few years ago, the process was changed. If you look back through the old uh, registrar's minutes, mm -hmm. there was a meeting in July every year of the board at that time, after everybody was reappointed, and they would just give the town clerk staff permission to use signature stamps. Um, but somewhere, I think around 2017, 18, uh, that got changed to the authorization on a piece of paper, which you all signed and on it. It clearly states that, you know, you give permission to use your signature stamp. So it was, 
it was moved at that time. So I just, but I want to have it clear that um, this meeting of the board just acknowledges that they did sign an authorization form at the time of reappointment or appointment and um, gives the town clerk staff permission to use their stamp. So, right. yes, and I, I'd like to open up that discussion um, to have it go on public record uh, because, you know, in looking at the Massachusetts um, general laws, and I don't know if you could bring that up, but I'd be happy to bring it up under um, Part 1, Title 8, Chapter 53, Section 7. If you could, um, D, that would be good. Yeah. yeah. So you want me to bring it up? Yes, please. Yeah. I have it excerpted, but I can also bring it up one moment. I think I'd taken out the whole thing. Let's see. One moment. I just excerpted it, but I think it'll be helpful to see the whole book. Oh. Where am I here? One moment. Oh, I haven't shared anything yet. Hold up. Let me... And now my computer's running very slow. One moment. Part. It's coming up now. It's just taking its time. What, what chapter was that again? So, um, chapter 53 here, I can now share. Went to. So, it's part one, title eight, which is there, chapter 53. And then section seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm on the same um, explanation of certification of signatures, which I had sent to you to everybody. Yeah. The Board of Registrars and Election Commissions from Secretary of Commonwealth's office. So that's what they're quoting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. So, you know, one of one of the things that. I felt is that maybe we could, you know, because of what happened last time, those those moments will come up again, you know, um, that maybe there is a middle ground because this seems open here under each nomination. Let me get to that part. Each nomination paper shall be marked with the date and time. I had excerpted it and now to find it. There it goes. I see the paragraph. Okay, so here. Um, and then it says the registrar shall place next to, well, I'll, I'll just read the whole thing or y'all can read it. But what I'm paying attention to is the registrar shall place next to each name not check symbols designated by the state secretary indicating the reason that name was disqualified. The registrars shall certify a number of names that are required to make a nomination increased by two-fifths there. So they're including the registrars within, meaning the board of registrars, uh, within this description. And 
you know, the for the purpose, what I'm looking at for the purposes of the section, a registered voter uh, signing their name to a nomination paper, you know, for instance, inserts, and it talks about inserts a middle name or initial in or mo omits a middle name or initial from, and this is in there, his name is registered, shall be deemed to have signed his name substantially as registered. I know personally that this is very, um, this is a very iffy area and arbitrary to some extent it could be looked at because my husband's name repeatedly um and he's not the only one but i know it personally as evidence my husband's name keeps getting disqualified and on the voter rolls there is a junior and my son it's a mill car e shabazz and my husband, it's a Milkar Shabazz. And so the reason keeps changing why his signature is disqualified. Now we've been told it has to have a senior or a junior. We were told previously that it was illegible. And, you know, I on some level, <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, he can't be the only one because I know this is not personal and he wouldn't be singled out. Um, but that there has to be this kind of, uh, you know, looking at these signatures and having the board of registrars in certain cases, perhaps, come in and be trained to also qualify signatures when this has repeatedly happened or there is some conflict within the town. Because otherwise, we are just you know, sitting outside of this whole process and we are not just being used as a rubber stamp, the Board of Registrars, but we are being used as a, a validation, right, to simply override anything having to do with the qualification of these uh, signatures, you know. So, Again, it's it's not personal, not saying that, you know, those in the town clerk's office aren't doing their job, but these signatures, it's all personalized in the sense that everyone has a different signature. You may sign it different on one day than the next. Um, there are several uh, stipulations within the state certification of signatures where you know, some of it is like, yeah, you can leave off a, a letter. So I think it's different on the local level and perhaps trying to be very, very careful in what they're approving, which I respect. But here we have three boards, a uh, board of registrars in this role. Why not utilize us with training to come in in special cases and make those determinations. May I say something here too, in regards to what you're talking about? Uh huh. If you go to uh, 950 CMR and look at 5503 in standards, it talks about exactly the stuff that you're talking about. Yes. About how they make the determination. Okay. Uh huh. All right as far as they talk about uh... right and that's what I'm talking about Jackie what I'm talking about is that yes that is what is in the state uh, law in terms of this is how you make the determination mm -hmm. and what I'm saying is on the local level and I'm sure Amherst is not you know uh, uh, any different than any any other town where mm -hmm. sometimes there are it's arbitrary it's mm -hmm. like you know I, w I don't want to call it guesswork but these are signatures that are made by people mm -hmm. and sometimes they differ from one election to the next and having the town clerk's office uh with with one or including the assistant town clerk be the the final say when we were brought in and appointed as the board of registrars with some capacity 
to, with training, with some capacity to look at these signatures and help make that determination when it is difficult or when there is something such as what happened with the petition um, a few months ago. Mm -hmm. okay. Dee, I'd like to speak. Um, uh huh. So, um, when nomination forms and petitions come in, there are seasons for them. Um, we'll be doing things daily on these forms and people pick them back up again daily. So I'm trying to figure out the logistics of having one of you coming in daily to go over anything that we have certified because there always are things in question. It's not just a special case. Every single, you, you know, you'll, you'll know if you look, if mm -hmm. you've looked at them. Yeah. Um, I have looked yes, at them, and that's why I yeah, saw like I my husband's signature well, once I again. I saw yeah, yes. him at the counter, and I uh -huh. him, and he mm -hmm. understood. Mm -hmm. And you know, when somebody Emilcar E Shabazz and Emilcar Shabazz, now Emilcar E Shabazz, yes, he's differentiating himself. But if we can also certify without a middle initial, how do we know, you know, that that's that person without a date of birth. It's just, there are too many things where it's iffy. You don't know when you're looking at a name against a name on the voter registration system that that's the person that signed because you don't Absolutely, have and I'm, I'm in yeah. agreement with you, Sue, and that's, that's what I'm saying. I think it, in cases where it is iffy, particularly if it's um, a petition where this is something where the whole town is involved, bringing in the board of registrars in that capacity, I think will help add transparency. So would you only propose it for town petitions and not for state petitions or nominations? No, I have a, a few questions. And what I'd like to do is perhaps postpone this and ask for guidance from the Secretary of State because these are my possible questions, for instance. Can the registrars opt to do the certification of signatures themselves rather than delegating the job to the town clerk? And this is just, uh, you know, uh, an open, you know, I want to open up that uh, possibility first off in discussion with the Secretary of State too. If the registrars opted to do the certification process themselves, how would they be granted access to the databases needed to do the certification? And would the Secretary of State provide training on how to use those databases? So, you know, these things have to be kind of rectified or settled in my mind in order for us to even, you know, say, this is how it's going to go for another year. Um, three, are there any towns where the registrars do the certification of signatures themselves rather than delegating that authority to the town clerk? Four, where are the rules or guidelines that allow delegation of authority from the registrars to the town clerk? I'd oh. like clarity on that. And then five, would it be possible for the registrars to request that the town clerk certify signatures but then still be allowed to review and change where there was disagreement? Any signatures that the town clerk declined to certify? And then lastly, can the board of registrars certify signatures where the signer has written their street address correctly but has not included their apartment number? And that would also go, I mean, that's just an example. It would also go like for, you know, they're missing a, a letter uh, in their name. Um, so those are, those are some of the questions that. I have after reading this, you know, that I'd like the the Secretary of State to answer. Can I say something in regards to that? It, it, going back to 950 of uh, uh, CMR 552, the section 12, it says the re registers may authorize the office employees of the city or town clerk's office, including the city town clerk, to perform all actions required by the CMR of the 5502, yada, 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 and that this authorization may be accomplished by, among other things, a vote for the Board of Registers. 
And that's what has been done in the past. Right. And I think the the word there, the operative word is may. And so that there is some uh, openness to perhaps how we would conduct business in Amherst Mm -hmm. as our board of registrars. Mm -hmm. Well, that gives you the... uh, And also one other thing in regards to that too, and... um, but this would be more of the candidate for state office. Um, then we need three or more registers to sign the appropriate certificate too, but that, and you can do as a, as a, a stamp for that one. But yeah, okay. But D, that, that shows where the authorization comes from. So that, pretty, that answers that question that you had. Also, um, to be certified and to be trained and to use a computer, We each only have our own state computer. They'd have to bring in another state computer. They'd have to wire it. They'd have to network it. That would all have to be done because we are all on our computers all day long. We wouldn't be able to leave our workspaces to allow somebody to come over and utilize it. So that would be a a hurdle to cross. Um, And you also need to get permissions to go into the system. It's a bit of a process. No, and I, I'm not afraid of processes. I've oh, worked for universities. <laughs> they have processes all the time. But I hear you, Sue, um, yeah. to, to let us know that it is a process. But um, I, you know, Amherst is, is a particular community that, you know, you have uh, folks who are very much engaged and very interested in um democracy and transparency and i'd rather be associated with the committee with a you know with the town uh committee that particularly when it comes to the vote that we are doing our utmost to make sure that it is transparent and all all the time you know looked upon as fair and that there is confidence confidence in the board of registrars and i think during that particular you know i know (laughs) during that particular time this summer people lost confidence in what we were doing and how things were being certified and i i think that's sad because you know like i say i i'm on this other committee with you and i know that you for for years have done the utmost to make sure that people should have confidence in uh, the town clerk's office. So, you know, this is my proposal to get some clarity on that from the Secretary of State before proceeding to uh, again say yes. You know, we're gonna uh, we're gonna do the the stamp because it ends up really being symbolically just the rubber stamp and. What, why are we here as the Board of Registrars? And before you go any further, I just want to mention you brought, you brought up a, a memory of what happened Thursday um, because there was a lot of information given. Um, Michelle Tassinari spoke to the group. Um, the class that she was giving was on 2022 elections, uh, what we can expect. And somebody raised their hand in class because they were talking about petitions and nominations going around and certifying and funny enough they asked um are we supposed to certify if someone doesn't give an apartment number and she said well is the town clerk of amherst here and i says oh crap (laughs) and she says actually they're going through this now and what's happening is um they're going to be putting together some stricter regulations and guidelines for everybody because right now as you know, and you've mentioned, Dee, it's very ambiguous on some of the interpretations. And all the city and town clerks do their best um, based on what is in print and what's on the petition form itself as far as how somebody should sign. But there are still questions in people's minds on, on certain occasions. So I think, I think involving them right now would be great. Maybe they can really give us some guidance or tell us when they're going to be coming out with a final you know, a new, new updated version on how to certify names. So again, I, okay. I ask that we, we hold off until Mm -hmm. there is clarity Mm -hmm. and I'd be glad to share these questions if, if that will help, but, um, that's where I am on it. Okay. In the meantime, I'm sorry, last one last thing and then I'll I'll shut Mm -hmm. up. But in the meantime, I do have permissions from all three of you to use our signature stamps. 
Um, it doesn't have a date. It just states that the date as of you signing when you were appointed and being sworn in. So going forward, I'm taking that as, you know, the length of your term. But again, we will, we can bring it up at our next meeting if you want. But for now, we have permission. Thank you. And yeah, okay. And before that next meeting, if people could actually go into find where 950 CMR 55.02 and 03 are to review those, because again, that gives a lot of information as far as like, you know, the standards to use. And that way you might get a little bit more of clarity of how, how things are rolling out. And I want that entered into the record. All right, are we ready to move forward with our last election of a permanent chair or discussion about whether we want permanent or for the next year or what, what we'd like, like to do? Well, I'm, I'm going to say that um, I think we do need a chair from the Board of Registrars and it not uh, rest on you, uh, Town Clerk Sue Audet. Um, and I'm just going to propose that we maybe break it into, you know, half a year. It is um, having served on other committees uh, within uh, the town. Um, the town asks a lot, you know, um, we do a lot because it is Amherst, I believe. And I, you know, I'm not saying that as, as a negative because I think it's important to be civically engaged. You know, I teach that, I live it. Um, that's, that's why I'm here. So um, that's my proposal simply because uh, I understand and being chair, there will be uh, extra work. So whether you know, whoever is chair, but I'm just making a proposal. If folks are, are interested in it being a whole year, I'd be down with that as well, but that's just my suggestion. And the only thing that I was seeing at that particular time is like, because I felt that um, people thought that Sue wasn't eligible, she wasn't a member and this, that, and the other. And I just want to say, and my point was that she is eligible and those were the points personally, um, I don't care if you want to do it six months to a year. Whoever wants to become chair, I have no problems with that. So would anybody like to nominate themselves or, or in, in maybe specify a term if you're interested in being chair? I, I of course, nominate myself. Yeah, of course. I nominate to Audet to be chair for a one-year term. I'll second that motion. I second wait, that motion. Wait, wait, wait. We didn't hear a second on Dee's. Dee spoke first. I'm sorry. I'm going to follow what I think is Robert's rules of order. So Dee nominated herself. And was it, there is, I know you guys jumped in there with me, but is there a second for Dee being chair? No? Okay. Um, I'm trying I mean, to write I could nominate it again. I think it needs to come from one of us three. We've had this whole discussion on that possibility. And so we're going to have it assume again. I, in just in my opinion on it, the responsibilities of the chair, I mean, it really, did I unmute myself? I did. Um, there seems like there's a lot there and a lot of things that will come from town hall. And it seems like it'd be a lot on one of us, which again, I'm not against taking on more, but it just seems like to keep things moving with the screaming kids in the background, sorry, keep things moving effortlessly. In my opinion, it feels like somebody likes in Sue's position that has all the resources at her fingertips would be easier for her to do it that's my my reasoning for wanting sue to do it okay so again this isn't anything against sue it's about keeping things separate and having clarity sue 
is a staff, a paid staff person for the town, our role as board of registrars are to protect the voter. And, you know, particularly town elections, again, not <laughs> casting any suspicions or whatever, but it's, it's just to keep things clear um, so that the residents, the voters, the citizens will feel and understand that we have done our utmost to make sure those boundaries are protected. Jackie, would you like to be chair? I'm simply, you know, knowing that in terms of work, I could do it. Mm -hmm. No, no, thank you. I... So this is more an issue of uh, the, the fear of the workload. Not so much the fear of the workload. I think that because of Sue being in the town clerk's office, that they have more access to things. Because even like, again, going back to that 5502, the Board of Registers really aren't in charge of the, maintaining the security of the files and that kind of stuff. That's already being done by that, that office. Because, um, you know, as far as like for the um, facility of, you know, most of the stuff comes through their office first. And to, to have to stop in town or, or contact someone on a regular basis to find out what's going on. The only thing that I would have to say that I would like, though, as far as like for the, um, the signatures, like when things are, 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 are signed, I think that is, it is a good point. Maybe if, you know, um, we could know when that when that's happening and that we have the option of coming in and, and um, reviewing the, the um, signatures that way. But, well, we're but, gonna, I thought we put that on hold. We're gonna talk to have the state come in and discuss that yeah. with us. Yeah, okay, okay. But I think I agree with Dee on this on the chair thing. I'm just, I'm frantically going through meetings Mm -hmm. um, meeting minutes here from the past and mm -hmm. it's always been a chair of um, one of the three other members because I'm as clerk I'm already the liaison that that's the administrative part I will continue to do that and the minutes if you'd like but the chair is really for the conduction of the meeting when we have a meeting um, and just like looking at the appointed handbook thing I mean you know I suppose I read it and I get nervous or whatever about things but like the preparing the agendas so mm -hmm. then would D, she would be responsible, she'd have to get it out in the 48 hours or the 72 hours, but then you would still post it to the town's website. I just, and nothing again with, you know, against you D personally with this, you're busy. Like you're always seem like you've got a class or this or that. And I just worry that all of a sudden we're gonna be thrown into another open meeting law violation because the agenda wasn't posted in 48 hours because Lord knows all of us, I'm sure, 48 hours goes by. Well, I can tell you, working with Sue on another committee, Sue, uh, make sure, you know, and I'm sure that all that will still be done. Yeah. Sue yeah. Ma is the one that makes sure all of those things are done in terms of the posting and alerts the chair of these are pending items that need to go on the agenda. Yeah. You know, um, okay. it wouldn't happen without sue and will, her I input to death yes i will nag you i mean death. that's that's <laughs> how it works so whether it's jackie you jamie you did a great job you know right. last time I, it might have right. seen like it it was a lot for you but you really right. did a great job and you kept things open in discussion and fair you asked you know critical questions when they needed to be asked it can be you so it's it's not about d no d's nominating herself so it's not going to be sue right you understand so and i think i feel more i mean i feel a little more comfortable knowing that sue kind of is still helping with that stuff to keep everything on point and on the the timelines um and again the meeting the whole conducting the meeting aspect of it i mean obviously you're a lot better at running a crab being a professor having you know giving people the opportunity to speak and dealing with a mass of people it, yeah it's not office. anything to do with being a professor well <laughs> it's I'm, I'm just bossy but oh right but i get oh, that I? I mean i feel better knowing that that's not all in any one of our laps because obviously if we i mean and not obviously because even if we did like six months 
I mean, we could still nominate D again in six months. It doesn't mean it's going to be me and then Jackie and then D and then rotate around. I just personally feel like it's oh. it would be too much for me to take on anymore. So, I mean, as long as, I mean, if D's willing to do it and you're comfortable with it, I think he, hearing that part of it that, you know, there's still going to be some guidance from town hall and getting the meetings posted on time and agendas and stuff. I'm, I'm better with that, knowing that, um, you know, again, I just, I dread being thrown into another whole mess of violating open meeting law rules and stuff like that. Can I make a suggestion? And maybe if we, how about if we had a vice chair? And that way all the responsibility wouldn't be put on one person. Okay, so yeah. you and you and Jamie are y'all nominating yourself for chair and vice chair? Not me. I would Not I really, would second no. Dee's motion for her nominating. I would second your motion, D, if you nominate yourself again for chair. Like I'm happy with that. And I like I said, I don't I don't have it in me, I think, to mentally right now with all the kids and the business and everything to do it the way that it needed to be done to be the ch chair for a period of time. Okay. So what about Jackie's uh, proposal of a vice chair? So oh. you have two. So you have, if the chair couldn't fulfill her duties, um, there would be a vice chair available. And if the ch the chair wasn't available to post the agenda or whatever there would be communication with the vice chair right and i think that makes sense too from the point of you know say you couldn't make it to a meeting just to already have something in place i think that's kind of what some of the point of our meeting today too was to kind of have plans in place for down the road and how to keep things moving smoothly so if there was a vice chair already nominated we wouldn't have to mess around with trying to figure that out on the day of the meeting if D couldn't make it to that meeting because she had a conflict or something in that regards. So I'm comfortable with that and I would support Jackie if she wanted to be the vice chair. Well, okay, I'll do it. Do you I'll want Jackie? The chair. I, I don't want to be the chair. Okay. No. 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 All right, okay. so for Robert Rules of Order, we still have to... Um, <laughs> you know, do it. Yeah, am I sickening myself? <laughs> so are we, someone has to, so I'm going to again nominate myself as the chair. I guess we should have a, a different vote for the vice chair. Yeah. So I nominate myself for the chair. Second. All in favor, roll call vote. Jackie Gardner? I'm in favor, yes. Okay. Jamie Wagner? I'm in favor, yes. D. Shabazz? Yes. And Sue, Sue Audette? Yes. Unanimous. Okay, so D is now our chair. So um, I nominate Jackie as the vice chair. And I'm sorry, D, um, how, for how long? We didn't say a, a term. Oh, so we were going to, so maybe that should be a different. <laughs> um, so are we doing half a year or a full year? Full to me. I second the full. Okay, so I guess we can vote on it. Yes, I'm in favor of that as well. Amy? Yes. Jackie? Yes. Susan? Yes. Okay. Full year. Unanimous. Okay. Now, um, who would like to nominate Jackie Gardner as vice chair? So, I just, I did. Oh, did nominate, you already? Oh, yeah. sorry. Yep. Nope, that's okay. I'll second, second it. Second. Okay. Jamie seconds it. Thank you. All right. All in favor, D. Nope, Jackie. No, all in favor. Oh, of Jackie yeah. Being okay. the <laughs> it's <know>. confusing. Okay. <laughs> and I'm yes. Okay. Write, I'm doing this yes. D <laughs> says yes. Okay, Jamie. <laughs> yes. Jackie. I guess I say yes too. <laughs> okay, Susan, yes. Okay, unanimous. Jackie is vice chair. Okay, for one year, right? Yes. Okay, same term as the chair. Okay. All right. Got that done. 
Yay. Um, is there any other business that you want to discuss? No, I, like I said, I'll send you my questions because, um, or maybe the, the letter or email should come from now the chair and the town clerk pertaining to it. Um, similar to, um, and you all haven't seen the, the meetings probably or the proceedings of the districting um, advisory committee, but uh, when questions are being posed to the state, it usually comes from you, Sue, and the chair. Yeah, and Mike too, usually. Depends on what it is. Yeah. And don't forget to oh, see yeah. Well, the, the, yes. We'll see yes, Jackie. of course. Well, all of you. Yes. Well, everybody. Okay. Yeah, That's everyone. Good. Okay. And, and I, I just, maybe for a future meeting too, um, just because I literally just popped into my head, but I know when Shavina was the town clerk, she had tried to involve us more as the board for things that pertain to like the, the day voting days. And I kind of got the feel that it was kind of the same thing where, you know, we kind of had our roles that had just been in place um, for a long time. So that's just kind of, we just did our jobs that we, did. And I don't know if you, you as the clerk, now the town manager, um, town manager, yeah. Um, but now in your new position, I don't know how you feel about that. Are you happy with us kind of continuing how just helping go collect things and do what we're kind of delegated to do on the, the days of the elections? Or do you feel like we should try to, to help a little bit more, do a little bit more? And I think with that, we would just need some time to prep if need be and kind of learn what we, we may need to help with or do going forward if that um, makes any sense yeah no it does and um no i'm happy to um i'm open to suggestions first of all but um i sent you the schedule with all the dates of the upcoming yep so if you want to be here for voter you know it, i can tell you nobody comes out but you're more than welcome to come in the office in case somebody comes in person to register to vote we're here till eight o'clock that night um and election day of course i'd love your help um it's it's great for you to be here to it's just to be a presence if even if you did nothing i mean you know to be here and if anything else that you can think of that you'd like to be involved in i mean past uh, talking to michelle tassinari on on the certification but you know again the, the board doesn't really get involved in a whole lot of stuff unless there's a recount or those kinds of things um beyond what i've just mentioned but if you have ideas, let me know. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Yeah. I'd like to do just, you know, for, for the year at some point, voter education. Um, you know, when Shavina was in office, that was something that I had talked with her about. Um, you know, whether it's about, you know, signatures on petitions, you know, how to do that. I know that you wrote up something, you know, but... Um, at some point having a more public presence to help with voter education even if it's just about you know the timeline and what goes on i think opening up that process um you know and talking about it with the public will again provide trust and still trust you know in the board of registrars and the town clerk's office so i'd like to see more of that and i'm you know i'd like you all's ideas on maybe how we could do that as a group you'd have to identify i think we'd have to first sit down and identify what areas we want to educate on i know just before i came on here today i met with someone from mass perg gave us some voter registration mm -hmm. forms and we have a handout on how to register people to vote which we've also done with the league of women voters this round so we have right. a lot of players right now helping us register people to vote um that could be another topic that the board could the board of registrars could get involved in if you were interested absolutely um, i mean meeting at the farmer's market you know and registering people to vote mm -hmm. you know i'm glad yeah i did see the league of voters i was at a funeral in louisiana this weekend um i participate with the league of the league but um you know, I think that's really important to partner with different organizations and groups to do that. But again, also have our own presence so that again, people see us as transparent, people see us as, as you know, um, trusting. Mm -hmm. so. Come up with some topics. Yep. 
Well, yeah. well for one thing, though, last year, um, they worked with UMass as far as getting students out to um, vote. Right. So I don't know, you know, it might be good to work with the Student Government Association and do it again. If you'd be willing to do that, Jackie, I'd be interested in, in doing that as well. Um, uh, when's the deadline for registration? Well, October. Hold on. Things are pretty close there. Where am I? Goodness, I'm going blank. Last yeah, it's simply we could sit at the 13. student union doing, okay, during lunchtime, you know, one day or something, and uh, uh, have the students register. Okay, because I think what they did last time, they had, um, they did it for a few days. Because mm -hmm. um, one, of, one of the issues as far as, um, you know, getting space and different things is where we're going to be going. Yeah to uh, sit with our little table and that kind of things. But yeah, but we can work all that out. Yeah, you get a student group to sponsor you, um, like at the, the student center, the the Republicans, the Democrats, they have a libertarian group. They also just have um, the Student Government Association. But, um, you know, you can simply sit, have a table next to them or something like that and register students to vote. Um, I just checked the, 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 from the notice that I had was the last day to register would be October 13th, though. So that's right, crunchy. 13th. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of crunchy on. Time. Yeah, that's what she said that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. And I will send to you all our handout on how to register people to vote. So you have the formatting on what their address needs to look like so that we're not rejecting voter registration forms. Yeah. I don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, we could look at, uh, when are we next meeting? We don't have a meeting date. Well, we're not the kind of group that meets regularly. I know, well, that's why I'm asking if we're gonna do any of this. So I, I think, um, I mean, for purposes of just setting up a table, you two can talk to each other. That's not, you know. Mm -hmm. When I find out something from Michelle Tassinari, I'll email everybody. That way we can look to our next date so we can discuss that. Okay, and then we would just go get the forms at your office. You can get them online, registered to vote ma dot com. Oh, know. really? And just print them out, or? Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so I'll check in with some of these student groups, unless you have some connections at UMass on with these groups, Jackie. Uh, no, not really. Okay. I don't really so, have any connection. But the thing of it is, you can always just go in there like cold, you know, just ask, you know, if you're, if you're interested in this. Yeah, no, it's all through email. The students, the students, there. it's all through email. So I'll, I'll uh, email and find out. Mm -hmm. But I just right. find that if you do something a lot of times in, in, in person, it makes a better impression and that you're really kind of like interested in, but anyway. Oh yes, and registering people to vote. I'm, I'm asking, partnering with these different student groups okay, because i think you have to have a student group uh -huh. sponsor yeah. you as an outside organization to come mm -hmm. into the student union i don't think that's changed yeah. so i'll yeah. okay i see what you're talking about uh-huh okay. okay i was thinking like afterwards was, yeah you know, okay. 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 okay okay yeah so, so are we ready to close out the meeting Oh, can I make a suggestion? Can we like make the closeout at this meeting since we really didn't have any, shall we say, um, business to carry over? Um, like what we did last time as far as like for the dates on the, the, the um, for the accepting of the meeting minutes. Oh, you want to you know accept that? the yeah, minutes? Yeah, we can as... you know, set something up so that we can take care of everything while, while we're here since Do it now. live. Well, yeah. I haven't, I've just handwritten everything out. It's a mess. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 We're gonna then, be meeting again. We'll have to because, meet again. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Within the within the allotted time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it that should be a very short meeting. Yeah. Three meetings. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that should yeah. be a very short one. Yeah. Okay. Who would like to make a motion to adjourn? Okay. <laughs> I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second, second it. Okay. Sure, okay. that one stay longer. <laughs> so everyone everyone's in favor? <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So it passes unanimously.
3.43 p.m. All right. Okay. okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Right. Have Thank a nice you. day. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Let's see. Let me get out of here.